Hello doctors, I will be discussing with you marvels of ACP treatment which I have experienced in my pioneering efforts in the last 10 years of practice. ACP therapy offered exclusively by Vasomedical New York USA is a non-invasive treatment for patients with angina and heart failure. ECP treatment is typically provided on an outpatient basis in a 35 one hour session or a period of approximately 7 weeks. To receive ECP therapy, the patient lies on a treatment table. Compressive cuffs similar to large blood pressure cuffs are securely wrapped around the patient's legs, thighs and buttocks. These cuffs inflate in a distal to proximal sequence in early diastole and deflate simultaneously in late diastole just prior to the onset of systole. Inflation and deflation are specifically timed to the patient's ECG to optimize the therapeutic benefits. The sequential calf inflation creates a retrograde pressure wave that augments diastolic pressure increasing coronary perfusing pressure and venous return to the right heart that is increasing preload and cardiac output rapid simultaneous cuff deflation decreases systemic vascular resistance afterload and cardiac workload clinical studies and data from the international ecp registry that is iepr coordinated by the epidemiology data center at the University of Pittsburgh continue to demonstrate that 70 to 80 percent of patients realize therapeutic benefit immediately upon completion of a course of ECP therapy. At patient follow-up, the therapeutic benefit is enhanced at 6 months and sustained at 24 months post-treatment. Quality life measures from a randomized trial and registry studies show significant improvement in the patient's ability to resume activities of daily living, social interaction, and recreational pursuits. Now, I'll tell you something about the hemodynamic effects of the ECP therapy. Studies have shown that the hemodynamics of ECP therapy closely resemble those of the intra-aortic balloon pump, that is IABP, long held as a gold standard for circulatory support of hemodynamically compromised patients. The magnitude of diastolic augmentation that can be achieved with ECP therapy was found comparable to that of IABP, resulting in improved coronary blood flow with decreased cardiac workload. We shall now discuss that which patients should be selected for this treatment as there are proper guidelines given. ECP therapy should be considered for patients with disabling angina or angina equivalent symptoms, especially those who no longer respond to medication or are poor candidates for interventional revascularization procedures such as coronary artery bypass grafting that is CABG or percutaneous coronary interventions. ECP may also be appropriate for patients who elect to avoid such procedures or for whom an excessive delay in undergoing such procedures is anticipated. Examples of angina equivalent symptoms include excessive use of sublingual nitroglycerin, Symptoms other than typical angina with activity including atypical pain, dyspnea with activity, silent ischemia, fatigue and palpitations. Refractory angina not responding to medical therapy, patients with syndrome X or microvascular angina. Patients who may not be amenable to PTCA or CABG due to the following reasons that may be the patient's condition is inoperable or at high risk of operative complications or post-operative failure. The patient's coronary artery anatomy is not readily amenable to such procedures or the patient has one or more comorbid states which create excessive risk. Examples of condition 
that may render a patient not amenable to percutaneous coronary interventions or a CABG or which may place the patient at high risk of operative complications for such procedures include the inability to perform angioplasty because the target lesion is not accessible, the existence of one or more lesions with incomplete reopening post angioplasty, the observation of one or more conduits post CABG with less than anticipated flow rates, repeated failure to maintain patency of a vessel post angioplasty, treatment of patient groups with small vessels and historically poor outcomes with angioplasty or CABG such as diabetics or females with small vessel disease. Example of comorbid states that create excessive risk include renal insufficiency, severe diabetic neuropathy, redo CABG or multiple complicated attempted angioplasty procedures. Patient selection for heart failure, patient with ischemic or idiopathic cardiomyopathy, patient with moderate to severe levels of congestive heart failure, patient with stable condition with manageable edema, Patients with left ventricular dysfunction with ejection fraction less than 35%. Now, you have seen that it's a big category of patients which can be included and offer the ECP treatment. ECP, that is Enhanced External Counterpulsation, is indicated and cleared by the US FDA for use in stable and unstable angina pectoris, congestive heart failure, acute myocardial infarction and cardiogenic shock. Now, let us study that what are the contraindications of ECP and also the precautions which could be taken. Now, let me explain you the contraindications of ECP therapy. They are as follows. Arrhythmias that interfere with machine triggering bleeding diathesis, active thrombophlebitis, severe lower extremity vaso-occlusive disease, presence of a documented aortic aneurysm requiring surgical repair, and pregnancy. There are also patients which can be taken up with precautions. Some of them are patients with high blood pressure that is 180-110 first should be controlled with treatment before giving ECP. Patients with a heart rate of more than 120 beats per minute should again be controlled prior to treatment. Patients at high risk of complications from increased venous return should be carefully chosen and monitored during the treatment with ECP. Decreasing cardiac afterload by optimizing cuff inflation and deflation timing may help minimize increased cardiac filling pressures and the possibility of pulmonary congestion due to increased venous return. Also, patients with clinically significant valvular disease should be carefully chosen and monitored during treatment with ECP. Certain valve conditions such as significant aortic insufficiency or severe mitral or aortic stenosis may prevent the patient from obtaining benefit from diastolic augmentation and reduce cardiac afterload in the presence of increased venous return. After knowing the indications, contraindications, and precautions to be taken during ECP therapy. Let us now look into the clinical evidence. Clinical benefits of ECP are demonstrated in over 40 journal articles, 70 abstracts, as well as an international ECP patient registry over 5,000 patients. Let me tell you about MUST ECP trial. In 1995, a large randomized controlled and double blinded multi center trial on the efficacy of ECP in patients with chronic stable angina, that is, MUST ECP, was undertaken at seven leading university hospitals in the United States. The MUST ECP trial results were published in the Journal of American Cardiology in June 1999. A total of 139 patients were enrolled in the study and randomly assigned to active or sham groups. Those assigned to the active group were given full pressure. Those randomized to the sham group were treated with low pressure. Patients enrolled in the study 
ranged from 21 to 81 years of age were classified as having CCS class 1, 2 or 3 angina and had documented coronary artery disease including a positive exercise stress test within 4 weeks of beginning ECP therapy. Patients in the active ECP group demonstrated significantly increased time to exercise induced ST segment depression when compared to the sham and baseline. Those in the active ACP group also reported a significant decrease in the frequency of angina counts. Exercise duration significant in both groups was greater in the active ACP group. International ACP Patient Registry that is IEPR in 1998 the International ACP Patient Registry was established at University of Pittsburgh to document patient characteristics for those undergoing ECP therapy, the safety and the efficiency of ECP therapy and the therapy's long-term outcomes in the broader population. As of 5th Feb 2002, 5,000 patients had been enrolled in the registry. An analysis of the long-term outcomes suggested that the clinical benefits achieved are sustained up to 3 years following an initial course of treatment. Other patient follow-up studies suggest that the benefits of EECP persisted up to 5 years. Now, let us look into the objective evidence which can be measured in the patients taking EECP treatment for refractory angina. We can notice the following changes. Increase in exercise duration. Increased time to exercise induced ST depression. Also, you can measure the improvement on the myocardial perfusion scan or a PET scan, there is increase in cardiac output, increased vascular growth factors like VEGF, HGF and VFGF, improvement in injection fraction on 2D echocardiography and also decrease in heart rate. The following parameters could be the objective evidence of EECP for congestive heart failure. Improvement in ejection fraction on 2D echo, improved diastolic filling pressure associated with decreased BNP levels in blood, trend towards normalization of neurohormonal activation is noted, increase in nitric oxide and decrease in endothelin, increased renin perfusion decreases plasma renin activity and lastly decrease renin angiotensin system excess activation. IPC registers every patient of EECP with registry. This means that all the medical details, treatment and progress of every patient is monitored by the top doctors around the globe. IPC follows strict international guidelines in case selection and quality treatment. The team of doctors at IPC have more than 8 years of experience in handling severe cardiac cases ranging from critical triple vessel diseases to chronic cardiac failure to hopeless patients declared by major hospitals whose testimonials and case studies are listed on our website www.ipc-india.org IPC Heartcare has a unique online monitoring system through which every patient's readings can be monitored by the chief cardiologist from anywhere even while an ECP session is in progress. We have largest documented follow-up data of primary cases treated with ECP in the whole world. Non-surgical cardiac treatment model of IPC, which is its intellectual property, has been developed through over 15 years of extensive research and expertise of over 30,000 patients. ECP treatment is an important component of non-invasive treatments offered at IPC. Dear doctors, it has been my pleasure sharing with you our positive experiences with ECP therapy at IPC. We would be glad to answer your queries if you have any at infodoctor at ipc-india.org. Thank you.